I'm back with the Montessori 101 series and today we're going to be talking about the area of culture that we call botany. Now if you guys have already watched the Montessori 101 on zoology then I just like to give you a heads up that it's very very similar okay a lot of the materials that you see here are very similar to what we have in zoology and the presentations are carried out in the same way except now we focus on items in botany as opposed to animal life. Before we get into talking about the actual materials and the activities in this area, let's just talk about how we can, how important it is to nurture, um, you know, the love of nature, plants and animals. In botany, we're studying about flowers, fruit, vegetables, trees and plants. And this was very, very important to Dr. Montessori that children should really commune with nature. You know, she was an, ad an advocate for peace and this is what she wanted most for children to grow up with, you know, being, having peace in their hearts and then going out to spread that in the world. And a very important part of being peaceful, she said, is communing with nature and, you know, learning how to look after plants and animals and things like that. So before even getting down to, you know, uh, getting materials on the shelf, the first thing you want to do is have plants and flowers in your classroom. Simple indoor plants, potted plants that the children can water. They can trim off the dead leaves. They can polish the big leaves. You can have some, some that go on shelves, some that are on the floor, potted plants. But, you know, we use the practical life area to teach children how to care for plants. Now, of course, this is a training room, so we don't have any plants that I can show you. But if this was a classroom that children were using, we would definitely have a lot of plants. We would even have flowers for them to cut and trim and arrange in vases to decorate their own environment. Apart from that, you can have window boxes where you can teach children how to grow simple herbs and, uh, you know, little things that that are easy to look after just hanging out a window it's a lot of fun um, you know they really become invested in looking after their little plants it becomes their pet project and they care about it now in uh, true montessori schools it's very common to have open access to a garden so we have doors which lead to you know a small enclosed space where we can have um, maybe a vegetable patch Sometimes we have cages with animals, you know, like a hutch for bunnies and things like that. And the children do not have to wait for break time to go out and use this area, or they don't have to wait for the teacher to say, now it's time to go into the garden or it's play time. Whenever they feel in the day during their three hour work cycle, they can just take a step outside, go and water some plants, just sit, you know, and be with the plants and be in nature just as we would in our homes, isn't it? Sometimes when we are, you know, if we have a garden and we feel like, you know, I feel like being outside, like, you know, in my case, um, I live on the fifth floor, but whenever I feel, you know, I'm a little bit tired, overworked, I'm gonna go and sit in the balcony and just look at the trees and feel the breeze. That's what we want children to feel as well. I know the fear is always there that, you know, if I do that, they'll just be always going outside and just hanging out outside. But remember, it's not that the indoors is something that's very rigid and strict. Everything in our environment, indoors, outdoors, are things that the children love to do. It's a place that makes them happy. So it isn't that, you know, they're going to abuse that freedom and just stick themselves outside the whole time. Trust them. Have faith and have patience in the Montessori philosophy. One of the very first activities that we do in botany is called the importance of the sun. And what we do here is we lay out a cloth that looks that depicts the sun. And our aim is to show children that it is because of the sun that there is any life on this planet. So we start by introducing them to plants, flowers, fruit, vegetables, trees, grass, whole variety of things, things that are native to their country, things that may not be from our country. And we tell them that these things exist. They're able to exist because of the sun. And the children help us to arrange these items around the sun. From there, 
The next thing would be to introduce them to animals that are herbivores. And we tell them that, uh, you know, what do herbivores eat? They eat the plants, they eat the vegetables, they eat the grass. And if there were no plants, vegetables, there would be no herbivores. That means there would be no life on earth. And then the next and final level would be to introduce them to carnivores, explaining to them that the carnivores eat the herbivores who eat the plants and fruits and vegetables. And in this way, through this interactive activity, we show them that without the sun, there would be nothing living on this planet. From this activity, then we go to something which is familiar, just like we had models of animals in zoology we have the fruits and vegetables, models of fruits and vegetables. You could have flowers, you could have plants as well. And we teach children about the characteristics of these. How do they, you know, are they crunchy? Are they soft? Do they have seeds? Are the seeds edible? Is the skin edible? Things like that. And then to go more abstract, we would go into the large pictures of the fruit. We will be presenting so many of you, uh, so many of these materials for you in the months to come. So make sure that you're always coming back and you are subscribed to our channel. Once we are done with, you know, teaching them through the, the models of the fruits and vegetables and things and the pictures, then we can go on to teaching them about the parts of items in botany. So I'm going to show you one of the uh, materials we have which is the parts of a tree but we also have parts of a flower we have parts of a leaf parts of a seed um, you know you can make anything that you like and the children learn about the names of these parts and match it to the control card the base control card okay once they've had experience with the concrete the next step would be to teach them about the parts of a tree but in a more abstract way with the pictures where we highlight each part and they later on learn to read the part and identify the word cards and match them to the pictures. Okay. So I'm giving this all to you in a nutshell, taking you through the materials. Okay. But as long as you stay with Sunshine Teachers Training, you'll keep learning about how to use these materials. Uh, from there, we then have the leaf cabinet where the children are learning about different shapes. We have three trays like this and it's presented very similarly to the sensorial material, the, um, the cabinet with the shapes and uh, we present it in the same way and then we can tell the children, let's go for a nature walk and find some leaves that have similar shapes to these. So there's a lot of things you can do. You could trace the leaves and color them and things like that and then finally we end with the life cycle of a plant the life cycle of a flower or the life cycle of a seed so we take the children all the way through and we do a lot of planting activities as we go through botany um, we try and find time to visit orchards we make fruit salads we cut the fruit and we try and look inside we taste it we do some cooking activities we really really want to give them a full sense of the plant world I'm sure that uh, you've gotten some ideas today in which to incorporate learning of botany in your schools and homes let me tell you it's a lot a lot of fun and you will get very rich experiences with your children when you start implementing some of the ideas that we've shared today. If there's questions that you have, please leave them in the comments below. If there's something else you'd like to learn about, you know we are always happy to have your suggestions. So let me know and uh, subscribe to our channel. Turn on your notifications and hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day.